Next, we have a, um, a video message from Professor Edo Ronchi, who is president of the Associazione Fondazione Sviluppo Sostenibile. He has served as Minister of the Environment and Member of the Parliament, and his name is still on the law for waste management here in Italy, and welcome him, though, online. Thank you. The climate crisis has reached dangerous level and is now rapidly worsening. According to the result of the United in Science 2020 report, drawn up under the direction of Secretary General of the United Nations by the World Meteorological Organization and by a group of organization experts in the field. In July 2020, the CO2 concentration level reached a new all-time height. The emission drop due to COVID-19 was not enough to stop the rise of concentration levels in the atmosphere. The global average temperature during the 2016 to 2020 period is the highest ever recorded. The damage caused by extreme weather events, drought, floods, and fires is now huge. Climate change is occurring at such a rapid pace that many animal and plant species are struggling to adapt. Many have already moved, some other at the risk of extinction. In July 2020, the Arctic Sea ice was the lowest ever recorded. Tropical storm have increased in frequency and intensity. Heavy rainfall concentrated in short period of time and other extreme weather events lead to increased floods. Drought and heat waves have greatly increased the hazard of large fires. Drought and extreme weather events also affect food production and are among the key drivers of the recent increase in world hunger. In 2019, although it was a year in which the rise stopped, the world CO2 emissions were 62% higher than 1990. According to estimates by UNEP, 2019 emission gain report, in order to have a good chance of meeting the Paris Agreement target, the global emission cut required per year from 2020 to 2030 are close to 3% for 2 degrees target and over 7 per year for 1.5 degrees. The climate change effects are now serious and it is necessary to change course quickly. The first condition of the turning point in the fight against climate change starts precisely from an objective and a certain necessity, the serious impact of global warming that we are facing today. COPs and international agreements remain important, but they are too slow and too exposed to the restraining positions of individual governments that are more backward and more linked to fossil fuel. Waiting for everyone to start with the idea of being able to exploit as an economic advantage. The lesser effort is dangerous position, which is reacted by an increasingly more concerned public opinion. Thanks to the commitment of several movements, especially youth movement, of religious leaders such as Pope Francis, but also of large group of leading companies, the most responsible position has prevailed, led by a group of countries that have declared to be willing, even unilaterally, to take on more ambitious commitment to fighting against climate change. Last year, at least 58 countries within the EUN took on this commitment. The European Union has adopted a net zero emission strategy by 2050 and has decided to rise its target of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by challenging 55% by 2030. The second condition of the turning point in the fight against climate change is fueled by belief that transition to climate neutral, neutral economy is today technically and economically sustainable. Furthermore, that was who start earlier with more advanced climate objectives may be able not only to limit and reduce the cost and damages of global warming, but also to acquire market advantages to challenge the most backward and most fossil-based economy and to force them to follow. 
a work citizen cutting edge company, responsible cities and countries can become active protagonists of this breakthrough without waiting any longer and without suffering the breaking action for latecomers. The COVID-19 pandemic, which has upset the habits of lifestyles of billions of people, has shown how connected and vulnerable we all are, and it has increased attention to environmental issues. The economic crisis generated by the pandemic is accelerating the need of for sustainable development based on a more resilient circular and climate neutral green economy. Economic recovery packages, which commit significant public resources, can indeed fuel a huge amount of, you, of new investment for climate neutrality. This is the third condition of the breakthrough in the fight against climate change. The European Union, for example, is committing unprecedented financial resources with 37% of the next generation EU fund appropriation for climate measures. To implement a breakthrough in the fight against climate change, seven strategic choices are necessary. Number one, define a strategy to reach climate neutrality by 2050 and an ambitious package of measures to be implemented by 2030. It is absolutely necessary to outline a roadmap with precise goals for all sectors to achieve climate neutrality by 2050, which provide a clear framework for the measures to be adopted and which allow period reviews of the result that are reached. Once the climate neutrality roadmap has been established, the intermediate milestones must be set starting with that of 2030, with ambitious target and consistent measures to be implemented to achieve them. Number two, cut investments and uh, subsidies to fossil fuels and the stand carbon pricing schemes. According to the International Energy Agency, in the 2014 to 2018 period, a total of $1,063 billion and on average was invested annually in fossil fuels, compared to an average of $308 billion annually invested in renewables. According to the projection may be the International Monetary Fund, referring to 2017, public subsidies to fossil fuels in 191 countries would amount to $5.2 trillion. This huge flow of fossil fuel funding must be cut and progressively eliminated. According to the World Bank, the carbon pricing initiative, which in 2010 were undertaken in just 19 countries, and concern only 4% of world CO2 emissions. In April 2019, they spread to 46 countries and are applied to around 20 of world CO2 emissions. Without an effective carbon price system, the use of fossil fuels is encouraged since the damage costs deriving from the climate crisis are not recognized in market prices and the advantages offered by renewable sources are economically underestimated. It would also be useful to introduce gradual form of border carbon taxes on high carbon import from countries that do not apply any carbon price schemes. The higher events deriving from carbon taxes could be used for a tax reform that would promote employment, especially among young people, reducing the tax burden and labor and fostering green investment by companies. Number three, give priority to energy efficiency to reduction in energy material consumption. The technological advances and the development of renewable in recent decades have not stopped the growth of greenhouse gas emissions since they have been thwarted by the enormous rise in water energy consumption increased by 58.5% from 1990 to 2018. The consumption of material makes a decisive contribution to energy consumption and the global greenhouse gas emission. According to the United Nations 
2090 Environment Global Research Report, more than 50 of greenhouse gas emissions come from the extraction of materials, the production of food, gold, goods and fuel, their transport and storage, and waste management. Furthermore, according to European Environment Agency, it is necessary to reduce the use of resources, change consumption and production pattern to achieve carbon neutrality. In industrial production, substantial energy saving can be generated by the transition from a linear production and consumption model to a circular model with raw material saving, waste reduction, increase in the use of product and components, increase in shared use and recycling of all waste generated. Substantial changes must also be made in the transport system. This world main energy consumer and in the residential sector. Mobility based on a very large number of cars is not compatible with climate neutrality. It is necessary to rapidly reduce their number and use and develop an alternative mobility solution, cycle, pedestrian, shared, increased collective transport, and to reduce any avoidable journeys, for example, making a better use of smart working solutions. In the residential sector, there is ample scope for unlocking a huge wave of energy restructuring, releasing investment that, in addition to reducing GAG emissions, would generate saving in bills, promote innovation, investment, and employment. Four, change the pace in the increase of renewable energy sources. Since 2010, the average cost of electricity generated by solar photovoltaic power has decreased by 73%, they generate by wind power by 22%. The cost of electricity generated from solar and wind power are new competitive with fossil fuels. Renewable benefit from continuous innovation. The International Renewable Energy Agency suggest to increase energy production from renewable sources from 10 of world consumption in 2018, at least 2018, 2030, and to increase electricity produced from renewable sources from 26 of electricity in uh, 2018, at least to 57% in 2030 by using economic recovery measures in view of climate neutrality target by 2050. Number five, increase electrification and promote clean hydrogen. Given the rapid development of renewable in their greater efficiency in final use application, to get to net zero emissions in the energy sector, the electricity share in energy demand is expected to grow substantially from the current 20% to 50%. In the industrial sector, electricity consumption should double to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In transport, an increase in electrification could lead to a reduction of more than 30% in GHG emissions. Sustainable biofuel will also play a significant role, particularly for long distance transport. In buildings, electrification will be the main decarbonization lever alongside energy efficiency and renewable energies. In the IEA net zero emission scenario, in particular from, for some heavy industrial production, such as steel and chemicals industrial, and for heavy and long distance transport, road, sea and air, global hydrogen product is expected to grow by seven times. Number six, increase carbon stock capture and removals. Maintenance protection from deforestation, fire, etc., and increase of forest system play an important role of soil carbon stocks. IPPC estimate that they have removed about 11.2 billion tons of CO2 per year. In the 2007 to 2060 period, soil is the second larger carbon stock reservoir after the oceans. Organic carbon, an indicator of soil health and quality, has undergone a steady loss due to poor agricultural land management practices. 
the enhancement of organic carbon in soil could play a key role in mitigating climate change and, at the same time, contributing to the improvement and maintenance of soil fertility and food security. Circular and regenerative bioeconomy activities contribute to organic carbon storage in soils and to climate change mitigation by using biomaterial both to produce renewable energy and to make sustainable use of these renewable materials in various sectors. Capture, capture, carbon capture and storage is still too penalizing in energy and economic terms and some aspects related to possible environmental impact remain to be further analyzed. Carbon use is also being developed through carbon capture and utilization and storage with an aim of generation product with a market value, chemicals, plastics, or fuel. The main advantage deriving from this technology is to obtain a produ product with commercial value that, that may balance the cost required for CO2 capture. Number seven, accelerating climate innovation. Most decarbonization measures can be implemented in the short term by repl replicating and disseminating already existing and well-proven technologies. But new technological solutions and the extensive use of technology current in the prototype or demonstration phase are also needed. At net zero emission transition by 2050 require increasing the pace and the scope of technology change. In particular, it is necessary to accelerate the replacement and conversion of existing plan and means with high greenhouse gas emissions, which would otherwise remain operational for decades, consuming a large part of the available carbon budget to stay below two degrees. Strengthen the spread of already available innovative decarbonization technologies and enhance the carbonization potential and the synergies of the spread of digital technologies, promoting private capital investment with adequate public instrument incentives. Develop and update infrastructure to avoid bottlenecks in the massive deployment of renewable energy. Accelerate the advancement and development of climate neutrality technology that are still at an early stage by increasing public support for research and demonstration and strengthening international technology collaboration. The climate neutrality transition can fuel a green deal. The major global warming challenge that affect the condition underlying both our present and future development is also an extraordinary opportunity for innovation, for the large scale use of the extraordinary and renewable human research with its knowledge. The transition to climate neutrality will revolutionize our energy system, generate profound changes in our consumption, production system, mobility, and housing models. This change will fuel investment, new activities, and new developments. It will fuel a green deal. The transition to climate neutrality would allow us to get out of the serious crisis generated by COVID-19 pandemic better than when we entered it. The most advanced cutting edge company can play a leading role in this transition, combining a vision that lives up to the times we are going through and the ability to turn major challenges into new opportunities. Thank you for your attention.